What's good? You are now rocking with the best. Ro Parrish here in Studio B. It is Playoff Central Live presented by AT&T 5G, the Hall of Famer. Isaiah Thomas, two-time champ is right there. Brendan Haywood, the big petty champion as well. We're going to hold their thoughts. We're going to go right now to Steve Nash, who's at the podium. Three and nine in the first quarter. Just what did you see from that? And was it just too? I don't want to say too little, too late, but it's twenty-one point first quarter. Just giving yourself two deep for all to come back from. No, I thought we had, you know. Ample opportunities. We were back in the game the whole second half. We had a ton of good looks at the end of the game. Probably didn't execute as well as we'd like. We still got good looks. Um, you know, we, we didn't make we, we didn't make any of them. It felt like, but uh, just one of those nights where maybe we didn't execute well enough, um, didn't have enough poise, but uh, plenty of stuff we can work on and and get better at. Alex Schiffer with the Athletic. Hey Steve, what do you make of your guys' defense, especially given, as you say, you weren't hitting shots, you were still able to stay in the game for most of the first half, despite that? Yeah, we were pretty solid again. I mean, those three games now where I thought our defensive effort was good. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting that we, we lose a game because of our offense, but, uh, you know, it was just a tough game. We just didn't, couldn't find our rhythm. Um, you know, a, a great opportunity for us to learn and grow from this. And uh, the defense was solid, though, but we got to clean it up both ends of the floor, but per particularly offense tonight. And if I could just follow up, it looked like Bruce was holding his groin or his hip late in the game. Is he all right? Yeah, I think he's fine. Yeah, I think he's fine. Malika Andrews with ESPN. Hey, Steve, I'm not sure if you saw any specific adjustments from the Bucks that you thought allowed them to uh, play differently or if it was more effort-based in your estimation. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, they're a desperate team. Um, you know, I guess you could say they, we, these are two elite offensive teams that played in the 80s. So, um, you know, they had a better start than us. Uh, you know, I felt like they got a better quality of shots at times than we did. Uh, you know, but I mean, it could have gone either way. You know, we had a, we, we we went really cold at the end of the game, and uh, you know, we'll 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 pick it apart. We'll look at it. We'll try to execute better. Uh, look at ways that we can learn from this game and move forward. I mean, you know, it was a tough tough playoff game where neither team was really shooting the ball well, creating good opportunities, and. Uh, you know, it was, it was, it was someone was going to win ugly, and uh, it was them tonight. Ryan Lewis with the New York Post. Steve, uh, you talked about looking at the execution down the stretch. Is it fair to say that you did actually get the looks that you wanted and just didn't hit them? And if that's the case, was that like? Yeah, I mean, you can always go back and look at a game and be like, uh, yeah, we would have liked this player to shoot or whatever it may be. You know, but in the moment, I thought we still were able to create some good opportunities, very makeable opportunities. You know, you look at it, there's only one or two buckets in the last three or four minutes that we needed to fall, and they just didn't. Uh, we, had, we had, I thought, plenty of opportunities. Now, you know, would I want Kevin or Kai shooting every single ball? Of course, but that's just not always the way it works out. But we can learn from it. We can grow. Uh, we got good looks at times that just didn't go in for us. And, you know, it was an uncharacteristic night in that respect, but also a night that is a new experience for us, you know, on the road against an elite team in a hostile environment. And uh, it was a very physical game. And, you know, at times I thought we, you know, maybe <clears throat> needed to just slow down a little bit, have a little bit more poise and, and get to our spots. Greg Logan, Tuesday. Yeah, I just want to for going out of the match, but uh, what kind of encouragement you take from not only the comeback, the fact that you held the 86 points for the second straight game and just didn't have a shot at home. Is that a little bit of a confidence for you? Well, I think it, it shows we've defended well. Um... You know, we, we can always improve at the defensive end, but it was a really solid game. We we gave ourselves a chance because of our defense. You know, and our offense just couldn't keep up tonight. We, you know, we're basically a bucket or two short, and, you know, we'll have to clean up the offense, but the defense was pretty solid, and it's going to have to continue to be solid. Rachel Nichols with ESPN. Hey, Steve. Um, if it's some coaches in the past say that their teams learn more from losses than from wins, especially when the team is a bit new to each other, uh, you guys, I guess, fall into that category just with all the injuries this year. Have you found that with this team? And if so, what do you think today kind of taught everyone to do for the next game in the series? 
Yeah, I, I definitely think it's it's much easier to learn from losses. You know, I think wins sometimes you can sweep things under the rug. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think we just got to look at you know the way we executed. You know, throughout the game, I thought that um, you know we we didn't make shots. We had some looks that we just didn't make that we normally make. But I thought our execution could have been better throughout. Um, so great experience for our guys. They're, uh, you know, it's like we said, a new group. They're still learning. They're still figuring things out together. And so it was a great experience for us, even if it was a painful one. Thank you. Welcome. Last question, Ian Begley with SNY. Okay, Steve, the, uh, the two possessions late where Bruce Brown ends up with the shot, um, you know, do you tell the group just to play free in that scenario and get the best look you can? Or do you tell them, hey, let's look for Kevin or Kyrie? Well, we, we all know that we want Kevin and Kai to shoot the ball, but if they don't get free, you know, they got to make the right play. And so we made the right play. Um, <clears throat> you know, you give some credit to the Bucks, and, um, you know, still we got some makeable looks. We can get better at executing. We can get better at uh, handling those moments. And it was a great test for us tonight, and I think it was a lot for us to learn from it. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate okay. it. Thanks, Now we'll take you to the stats for Giannis and Middleton. They combined for 79% of the Bucks' points tonight, the highest by any duo in NBA playoff history. In game two, they combined for 35 and 16. First half alone, 36 and 16 for the two primary options for the Milwaukee Bucks. And allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Ro. We had to take you right to immediate post-game coverage. Steve Nash speaking live. They take the L in game three. They lose by three and... The Nets are now 0 for 2 in both game threes. They lost in Boston as well. And I have the Hall of Famer Isaiah Thomas and Brendan Haywood with me as well. Z, coming to you first. Looking at this game, we heard Coach Budenholzer say we have to score more points. That was the quote. So I want to get your assessment on this game, seeing that this game was very low scoring. Well, I, I, I disagreed with him at the start when he said we needed to score more points. And I said you... You need to figure out a way to stop Brooklyn from scoring. And, you know, tonight they did that. Uh, The last two games, they gave up 122 points average. Tonight, uh, they give up 83. And, you know, they end up winning the game. Now, you know, we just put up the stat muse up there, and they talked about all the the great offensive categories of of Middleton and, and Giannis. But, you know, you win the basketball game because you stop the other team from scoring. Again, Brooklyn only scored 83 points, and you win the basketball game. Defense wins championships. Defense wins basketball games. And I thought Milwaukee did an excellent job on the defensive end tonight with their hustle, with their determination, with their challenging of shots, with their physicality, which made it really difficult for Brooklyn to really get a rhythm. Now, we'll say that Brooklyn missed some shots, and, you know, but it really came down to you got to give Milwaukee a lot of credit for their defensive effort, their defensive challenge, their intensity, and their energy. It wasn't a beautiful basketball game, but for Milwaukee, they did exactly what they needed to do to extend this series in terms of getting it to you know, a game four without being down 3-0. Yeah, they held Brooklyn tonight to a season low 83 points. We saw with Middleton. Say, say that one more time. A season low 83 points for the high scoring Brooklyn Nets, who, you know, have put up 120 points, it seems like, every other game, maybe more so far this season. So Zeke knows a thing or two about defensive <clears throat> basketball in the postseason. He has the trophies to prove it. B Wood, coming over to you. Um, we know that the Nets once played in New Jersey, but. They're not playing it anymore, but it was pretty much Brick City tonight when you look at the overall field goal percentage for each team. 37% for the Bucks. They shot 19% from three. However, they still figured out a way to win. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're the Milwaukee Bucks right now, you're happy that you were able to get this win, especially when you look at the fact that I think they were 6 of 31 from the three-point line. That's coming off of 8 for 27 from the three-point line the last game. So they've been having problems scoring the basketball in this series against Brooklyn, and they still haven't solved that but they were able to get the win. And in the playoffs, sometimes you got to win ugly. And when you get those type of wins, you take them, you move on. But there's going to have to be some things that um, 
Milwaukee looks at offensively that they're going to have to do differently if they're going to win this series because don't expect Kevin Durant to come out there and, ha- and shoot the ball that poorly again. He's one of the most elite NBA players uh, offensively that has ever donned a jersey in this league. So uh, if, I'm, if I'm the Bucks, I'm happy I got the win, but I understand there's work to do because offensively we were not sharp. Yeah, Kevin Durant, we had, he had 30 tonight. And, Zeke, I'll come back to you just as far as we, we spoke about this on the pregame earlier and we talked about those adjustments that it, it seems the Bucks haven't made. So just watching this game, seeing what they were doing, mainly on the offensive side when it comes to using, you know, the Greek freak along with Chris Middleton, what were your thoughts on their offensive execution? I, I, I thought offensively, uh, you know, they, they wasn't sharp. And, and you know, the, the shooting percentages showed that. Um, you know, their, their lack of movement, um, you know, just the one-on-one isolation. Uh, everyone knows where you're going with the basketball, Giannis driving the basketball, or Middleton. And I thought they got, they got to figure out a way to use Holiday more. Uh, Holiday ends up uh, hitting the game winner for them on a, on a you know, a, a broken play uh, where they're coming down court and he makes a spin move, get to the basket, lays it up with his left hand. Um, that wasn't a design play that was... Um, you know, something that he improvised that some of the great players have a way of doing. But, you know, for the Milwaukee Bucks, you got to get a, you got to find a better system and a better rhythm of play uh, to get your guys going. And it just can't be we're not making threes. And if we don't make threes, we don't play well. Giannis is too good a basketball player. Middleton is too good a basketball player. Holiday is too good a basketball player. Put them in some different kind of actions and make the defense think and make the defense work. Well, right now, Milwaukee, now they are on the board. 2-1 is the series. Game 4 is on Sunday. But in the meantime, Coach Bud, he is at the podium. Let's take a listen. Um, obviously, that wasn't a pretty game, but just what did you think of the opportunity Yeah, no, he, uh, he made a couple big ones. Um, you know, you just every both teams were fighting for any bucket they could get. So, um, you know, Chris able to, uh, you know, put us in a spot where we had a chance to win and drew with a big basket, um, you know, late. So, um, you know, a couple good plays by both those guys. Drew was struggling for most of the night. Just what do you think of his confidence, even with a rough night, to push and transition and get out there and make that play? Yeah, no, I mean, you know, he's that kind of guy. And, you know, I think the, the work he's doing defensively, you know, is, is he, he's putting a lot of work in there. And, you know, to just take the ball and, and get to the basket and, and finish, um, you know, with a, with a scramble defense was – we needed that. We needed that one play from him, and he made it, and it was big. Giannis obviously came out with a huge first quarter and then struggled a little bit more after that. Um, he shot eight three-pointers tonight. That's the most he's ever shot in a playoff game. Just how do you want him to try to find that balance of, I mean, taking shots when they're there, but also not settling? Yeah, no, like you said, I think the first quarter he was in attack mode. I think the spacing, you know, we were we were better. We got, you know, I think 30 points. And, and then from there it was a little bit of a, you know, a slugfest. Um, so Giannis yeah, just got to keep finding his spots, um, you know, can get to second actions, third actions. Um, and, you know, he's, he's just going to keep playing and making good decisions and playing for his team. Hey, McGarkey. We talked yesterday about how your character is going to be tested in these types of situations. Just what is the way y'all kind of scratched and clawed after the, after the league got away? What does it kind of say for y'all's character to pull this one out after blowing the play? Yeah, no, I mean, you know, for us to have the big first quarter and, and then, you know, things change. And uh, for us to, you know, just find a way to win a game, um, you know, your character's tested in the playoffs. Characters tested coming into this game, and you know, like we said, the, the group has has got high character. They responded, and now, now we just got to fill our cup back up and get ready to do it again and uh, on Sunday. And the defense to hold them to the low 80s just was it just a matter of intensity or turning up, or what was the difference for y'all defensively to hold them down if they were able to? Yeah, no, I thought there was just a lot of good, you know, competitive stuff. You know, guys fighting, getting through screens, contesting. Um, you know, Brooke, particularly in the second half, protecting the rim, um, getting block shots. Um, you know, it just took everybody. Um, you know, any way to get a stop uh, is what we needed to do. And, um, you know, a lot of guys individually, the group together, uh, just found a way to get enough stops. Jim Mozarski. 
Mike, well, you mentioned the, the spacing there a little bit in the first quarter. I, I don't know if all 30 points from two guys is is how you would draw it up, but what? But did that set a tone, I guess, with the way Chris and Giannis went about getting offense and scoring early in the game? Yeah, no, I think there was a little bit, you know, of, of just setting the tone that those two guys, um, you know, having a big first quarter, um, you know, they're our leaders. They've been here a long time. They've been through a lot together, um, you know, so for, uh, you know, coming here, playing for them to have, you know, 15 each in the first quarter. Um, it doesn't matter how you do it this time of year. You just got to find a way to get it done. Bill Martin. All right, let's go ahead, Joe. Sorry, I, uh, sorry about that. Hi, Mike. Hey, um, I'm just curious what's going through your mind there late. You know, it's 3-10 or whatever. Tie game. It's been tied for three minutes. It's uh, almost a do or die for you guys. You've got two of the games, like, all-time great clutch players on the other side. What, what are the things that are going through your mind about those two uh, in, in that moment? You know, we just got to find a way to get a stop, find a way to get a win, um, execute and get a bucket. Um, you know, it's three minutes to go. You know, I think there was a timeout at 310. I think they called it. But, yeah, those exact thoughts. We just find a way to win here, um, find a way to keep making it hard on them, contest, um, you know, get through screens, fight. And then, you know, the execution, I, I thought they executed a couple things. Chris got to a good look, um, you know, after we got a stop. And Chris got a couple more baskets. So... Um, you just, you know, you, it doesn't matter who you're playing. Um, tie game and a playoff game, just trying to find a way to win. All right, time for one more to Lori Nichols. With Brooke Lopez having the six block shots, and I think three of them were when the Nets were trying to either tie the game or take a lead, did you see something in the last three days where there was maybe an opportunity for him, or was he just getting in a rhythm with the timing and there was the opportunity in this game? I mean, it's, it's one of the things Brooks done, you know, night in and night out consistently for us. Um, you know, I think he makes great reads, great decisions, his length. Um, you know, he's just, he's great in there. And so, you know, everybody's trying to get there, both teams. And, um, you know, Brooke was able to make some big blocks, some big, you know, just stops down the stretch that, that were really important. So he's, we need him going forward. Thank you, guys. All right, thanks, bud. In the victory as the Bucks get a game in this series, Four, well, not four is game four. Game four is on Sunday, but they are in this series instead of being down three nothing. Of course, back here with the Hall of Famer Isaiah Thomas, Brendan Haywood, the NBA champion. B. Wood, we were looking at Giannis, of course, the subject a, a lot of people have been talking about is this three-point shooting and maybe shooting too much in certain situations. So far in this series, four for 31 shooting the three. Say, what, that, say that again. Four for 31 mm. shooting in this series from the three-point line. Well, listen, four for 31, if you if you shouldn't get to that point. If you're four for 31, that should be Correction, a, in the playoffs, in the playoffs. In the playoffs, yeah. That should, that should tell you that you don't need to take these shots. Now, look at Giannis right here. You see how much space there is? That's way – that they're giving him that shot for a reason. Giannis has to understand he's open by design. Look at all this space. Now, what I think Giannis is doing is attacking this the wrong way. He's trying to prove to the Brooklyn Nets, I can hit these shots. That's not who he's been throughout the course of his career. That's not who he's been in these playoffs. What he should be doing is taking up this space, sometimes not to drive, but to do but to do dribble handoffs to his guys that are playmakers, whether it's Forbes, whether it's Holiday, whether it's Middleton. When they back all the way up off of Giannis, instead of trying to attack the basket with all eyes on him as – guys with the elbows and boxes, he should kind of take a page out of Draymond Green's book. We see Draymond do this a lot with Steph. They back off of him, he dribbles down to the mid-post area, and he does a dribble handoff, and Steph gets an easy shot. That is an easy way to take advantage of a team giving you space when you're not a jump shot shooter. We used to do this all the time in Dallas. Rick would say, hey, guys back off you, dribble, take up that space, and do a dribble handoff. They say, don't you dare shoot your jumper, Brendan. But, <laughs> what you, but make sure you take up that space and do a simple dribble handoff because what happens is now your guy comes off and he's wide open because where's Blake Griffin? Blake Griffin's in the paint. Mm. He's two feet away. It's not, about prove, it's not about being macho. It's not about pr be proving something to anybody. You have to play smart basketball. Giannis taking eight threes in a playoff game is not smart. He has never been that person at any point in his career that should be taking eight threes in a playoff game. Today, presently, he's not capable of making those shots. 
So what he has to do is turn most of the, the bulk of those shots down and figure out a smarter way to attack the Brooklyn Nets. And he has to come to that conclusion or somebody on the coaching staff and his teammates have to tell him, hey, man, we won tonight, but you take eight threes? That's not the wave. That's not it. And that's no disrespect to Giannis. I want to see him be the best basketball player he can be, but that's not smart basketball. Four for 32 in the playoffs, three for 16 shooting threes. That's Giannis's numbers so far this postseason. So we'll take a pause talking about Giannis, and we'll send it to KD, who is at the booth right now. Hey, Kevin. Uh, from that point where you guys uh, took the three-point lead on your team, I mean, in your mind, was that just a situation where you had spent so much energy? You were racing that 21-point lead, the legs coming down, got the better of you guys down the stretch? No, I wouldn't blame it on that. I just think we didn't make the uh, we didn't make shots down the stretch. I mean, we made a, a couple, but I think we got some good looks. I think we rushed a couple uh, opportunities there, um, you know. But I like how we clawed back into the game, but I hate how we even started off that way. So um, I wish we'd have made a couple more plays down the stretch, but uh, you know, that was a tough one. Malika Andrews with ESPN. Hey, Kevin, when you say that was a tough one, one of the things Steve mentioned is he never thought that a game would, for this team, come down to offense and be proud of the defense. I'm wondering what you made of that and if there's anything to take from that moving forward. Yeah, I mean, I like how we defended all game. I like how we, uh, you know, we rebounded all game. Uh, you know, we didn't let uh, our missed shots dictate our defense, especially when we got down big. and. Uh, you know, we uh, we when we tied the game up. We couldn't score for a few possessions, um, with like four or five minutes to go. And I mean, I think we got good looks, a couple that were open that we missed. Um, but that's part of the game. I just I just like how we stay with it, and that's what we're gonna continue to have to continue to do in this series: is stay with the game, stay with our plan, stay with you know each other individually. If guys missing shots, and then we still encouraging one another, and you know keep playing. So our defense has to be there no matter what. On an offensively potent team like this, though, can you look at this as an anomaly where you miss shots, or can you not afford to think of it that way? No, nah, we can't expect to make shots next game just because we missed. You know, we got to go out there and and uh, you know take it a possession at a time, but um, you know prepare these next two days and practice and get our bodies right, get our minds right, and come back. But we can't expect to make shots just because we missed them today. Thank you, Greg Logan with Newsday. Uh, Kevin, it seemed like you guys um, made all the right plays today, but Milwaukee really concentrated on getting the ball away from you and Kai and uh, uh, and left uh, Bruce open quite a bit. Uh, do you feel like you did the right things and and just what, how tough did they make it on you to get the shots you wanted or to get to your spots? Um. Yeah, they played more physical. They were there at the rim. I mean, they just played they they played they regular way. They played how the way they've been, you know, the way they've been playing the whole season. Uh, I think we got great looks. We didn't knock them down, but they also did a good job of contesting and being physical and, you know, blocking shots at the rim. Um, but for the most part, um, we got back into the game, had plays down the stretch, and you know, they was able to make a couple more shots. Christian Winfield with the New York Daily News. Hey, Kevin, just circling back to that first quarter where they take that 30 to 9 lead. Are you saying that basically that is a byproduct of you guys missing shots, or was there anything about the approach to today's game that was off the uh, I think we missed good looks. I mean, we got some early on, and I guess we were just hoping the next shot went in, and then they got up 15, and then we'll come down, and we might. Uh, you know, we get a good look and they miss, and now they out on the long rebound. You know, so it just didn't work out for us to start the game. But I like how we played with it. That's just probably the name of the game for us in the playoffs: is continue to keep pushing, keep fighting, um, each and every possession, and it'll turn for us. So tonight it turned for us a little bit, but um, we want we definitely didn't get over the hump the way we wanted to. Last question: Alex Schiffer with the Athletic. Kevin, you just touched on this a little bit, but that second quarter where you guys started to dig yourself out of that hole and make it a game, is that as simple as just making shots or was it some adjustments you guys made to really open up the offense? No, it was really simple as just making shots. I think we got good looks. We got to the paint. We made the extra pass. 
Uh, and we just made shots. You know, that's the, sometimes that's the name of the game. Both teams played incredible defensively. Uh, both teams played extremely hard. Uh, low turnover game. Uh, you know, they had eight blocks. We had eight steals. Five blocks. You know what I mean? So it was one of them grind out games. And, you know, they just made one more, couple more points late. You know, they hit a couple more shots than we did. Thanks, Kevin. We appreciate it. From Kevin Durant, we go to Drew Holiday. Nice shirt. Link Andrews. Hey, Drew, I'm just wondering if you could walk us through that last go-ahead shot you made. Uh, yeah. Down the stretch. Excuse me. Um, um, I think, uh, well, I brought it up the right side, and I saw Joe Harris next to me and um, Bruce Brown in front of me. And at that point, I felt like maybe they thought I was going to call a timeout. Um, I think in my head, I was kind of thinking, well, maybe I should run some clock. But I saw me and Bruce Brown one-on-one. -on -one, so just made a move, and it was a good one, and, and ended up getting a lap. It looked like for a part of the game, you were just kind of struggling a little bit to find your shot. Was it just one of those things, open, take it confident? Or did you think about it a little bit? For sure. I think that was one of the only one-on-one -on -one plays that I had all game. So um, at that point, I... <clears throat> Just moved and saw the rim and uh, made a lap. Thank you. Eric Name. It kind of made me think of the Memphis game a little bit. You guys going without the timeout, you pushing. That's, it's a very different situation. But so in your head, you were thinking that maybe you guys were going to call a timeout and you weren't going to be able to push? Uh, nah, Bo was saying push it, but um, I, I thought, I think that they thought I was going to call a timeout once I, once I crossed half court. Um, I think for me, I just really thought there was like, what, 15 seconds? I think, well, when I saw it, I think there was like 13 seconds on the clock. And um, in my head, I'm like, well, should we run out a little bit more time or should I just go? So again, I just had the opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one matchup and I went. For you guys, you take such pride in defense to be able to get two big stops late. Just what did you see on those plays and, and what do you think of your guys' ability to really make those inbounds play stuff? Um, I think, attention to detail, um, being able to uh, kind of determine where guys are going, uh, make it difficult for them, <clears throat> and then just really locking in, being competitive. Uh, really when it comes down to it, wanting more than, wanting more than they do. Um, we know the situation, and we know that now that we're down 2-1, we, uh, we got to protect home court. What is it feeling like for you right now when you kind of turn the corner on pick and roll? I know you kind of got in the lane, had a couple of floaters that, you know, bounced in and out, but just kind of what are you seeing when you turn that corner and you pick and roll with numbers? Um, I think at the last second I see guys collapse, and I kind of try to pass it out for, for threes and try to get a little bit of movement, um, get into the paint and try to make something happen. But uh, I do think at some point today I, I got a little discouraged because I'm getting in there and I'm, I'm and I'm putting it in there and uh, I mean my shots aren't falling. So <clears throat> again, really just trying to be aggressive, get into the paint, make some plays. Eve McGarvey. Just wanted to for two high scoring offenses like this to have a game in the '80s. Just for what was the difference for y'all on defense tonight? versus the first two games? Was it just a matter of intensity, energy, or just what were y'all doing that was able to hold this potent offense down to 83 points, lowest points of the season? Um, I think part of it is playing desperate, um, knowing the situation, knowing what this game means to, to us, uh, what it means to be home. And then the other part is uh, the performance that we had the first two games, um, showing that that's not the type of defense that we play. Um, that was really out of character. So. I think being able to really be aggressive, um, fight through screens, make it tough on Kyrie and KD, and uh, kind of go from there. Vinny Goodwill. Adrian, you just mentioned uh, that desperation that you guys have being down 12. It doesn't seem like that's an emotion you can tap into every game for the rest of the series. So can you just, I guess what the goal would be, to just to make this as ugly as possible until you guys find your offense? Um, I guess you can say that. I think I would kind of put it like we strive for our defense. Um, defense first. Defense wins wins games, and they've won they've won championships. So I, I think to be able to get a stop um, 
even down with two seconds left means a lot. Uh, them scoring 82 points or what was it, 80, 83 points. Um, I feel like for us, that's the type of defense that we want to play. If we got to muck up the game, then we got to muck it up. But when it comes down to it, we really want to be aggressive on on everyone, on their main two guys, and really just lock in uh, attention to detail and and be able to just be aggressive with them. What is the, I guess, when the game is tight for three minutes and nobody's scoring on either side, what is the thought process while you're on the floor in real time, like before you take timeouts to regroup and you're just sort of in it? Is it a matter of let's just try to get a stop any way possible or is it let's try to get a score? I think it's stop first. Uh, get a stop. Um, great defense possession, especially being home. You have the crowd to back you going into offense. And offensively, that's usually how it goes. Um, I know K Mid and Giannis are probably tired from, from carrying this, but um, again, I think it's getting the stop first and, and being able to go from there. A season low 83 points for the Brooklyn Nets. Kyrie Irving, he's at the podium. Uh, shoot, man, they, uh, they did what they were supposed to do. Come out aggressive, backs against the wall, sort of say, and uh, you know we had to weather that storm. So, you know, definitely uh, kind of <laughs> put us on our heels for the rest of the game and just playing catch up, uh, playing their style of basketball, and then they made some big, big timely shots, uh, which carried them, carried them forward. But we had our chances down the stretch. Uh, it was a possession by possession game, you know, both teams battling. So that, that's a good old fashioned. Uh, Good old fashioned playoff game right there. Brian Lewis with the New York Post. Hey, Kelly, you mentioned the chances down the stretch. Uh, two questions. One was, it, do you think having to fight back from the 21 point deficit, that kind of fatigue played a role in some of the shots that you missed? You guys as a team missed down the stretch? And secondly, can you just walk us through that last possession where it was kind of a scramble and then Bruce went in on the drive? Yeah, no, I, I think. Uh, you know, in any NBA basketball game or any competitive field, you start off down, uh, you're going to have to cl climb your way back out of a hole. Otherwise, the game could go from 21 to 31 um, in a matter of, uh, you know, five minutes, six minutes. So for us to climb back in it and, and give our give ourselves a chance down the stretch, you know, proud of our guys. But obviously, there's more, no moral victories when you lose um, in, in, a, in a situation like this. Uh, you want to come out, uh, you know, kind of with the dub, with, with the win. But... Uh, what was the second part of your question? I apologize. I was just asking the Bruce Brown. The oh, yeah. What was the, on the scramble where he drove in? Yeah, we, we have a few end-of-game plays uh, that we like to practice and, and run through. Um, we had an opportunity to execute, and we failed to do so. So um, ended up in Bruce's hands with uh, with a contested layup. Um, you know, usually uh, Bruce puts us in, in a great position to – at least have something at the rim that, that goes in, but tonight just didn't go for us. So it's not on him. It's not on any one person. Just got to execute. They they really uh, were physical down the stretch and made it and made it tough. So you got to give them credit. Rachel Nichols with ESPN. Hey Kai, um, James sees so much when he's on the court. I can only imagine when he's on the sideline. Even he's able to give you guys some really good advice. What in particular is he helpful with when he is in that position, even though he's injured, uh, talking to you guys? I mean, he's, he has so much experience uh, just as a hooper. You know, he, he, I know it's tough. I know it's eating him alive inside just uh, being on the sideline. So yeah, he, he does what he can uh, to offer us advice and, and just keeping us balanced and grounded throughout the, you know, it's unfortunate that even in the regular season, he was in, in street clothes when we were playing against the Bucks. Uh, so we're we're very familiar kind of with this territory we're in. We we just don't want to uh, you know lose our uh, momentum. So he he tries to keep us going in that sense, and, and we're just thankful and grateful that we have him out out here with us. On, you know, kind of a player coach. So is it more just um, not specific X's and O's, but more just flow of the game kind of stuff? It's just his presence. I mean, we're, we're all mature uh, at this point in, in terms of guys that have 10-plus years on, on the bench. So uh, we've seen a lot. We've, we've been through a lot. Uh, but like I said, I know it's eating him alive not to be out there, and he's doing what he can to, to stay engaged. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Alex Schiffer with The Athletic.
Hey Kyrie, this is the second game you guys have held in Milwaukee at 86 points. And then Steve even said your defense would have kept you in. I just what, what stood out to you about the way you guys guarded? Uh, I feel like we made it tough uh, at certain points in the game, uh, but obviously calls could go either way. They get in the bonus, uh, you know, some tough ones. And we, we just, just got to be able to respond better. And that, that's just due to our preparation um, and our game planning. You know, a few different things uh, that we probably are looking back at uh, at film tomorrow that were out of our control and uh, a lot of things that were in our control. Uh, you know, just game four, I don't, I don't think it'll be the same flow. But we just got to prepare for whatever is getting thrown at, uh, at us. Last question, Malika Andrews with ESPN. I was wondering, you know, there's an adage that says that game threes along with elimination games can sometimes be the toughest to, to close out. Did you feel it was a specific adjustment from the box or was it a, a pressure and an attitude that they just had from the get play that made the difference? Uh, tonight just shows you that it could go either way. Uh, you know, in those final, was it less than 24 seconds? Uh, I thought Bud was going to call a timeout. I'm sure other guys on the floor did, and they and they went for the quick two, uh, and that put them up one. It, it took pressure off them to come down and, and get into an organized set. Uh, but even just plays before then, you know, just in and outs or just a scramble of the ball, and, and that's just good old fashioned play all basketball. So uh, when we get a less than 90 point scoring game on both sides. You know, you look back at the film, we, we feel like we did a good job defending them. They feel like they did a good job defending us. So game four should be should be special. Um, but we're definitely going to take our lessons from this game and, and move on to the next one. Thanks, Kyrie. Yep. Thanks so much, Kyrie. Thanks. Thanks. You guys can help me. Thanks, Kyrie. His, third, his 11th career 30-20 playoff performance in the game three win. It's just the international player coming through on video. You'll hear from Giannis next. He'll be at the podium as Playoff Central Live presented. Com slash pick em. You're watching Playoff Central Live brought to you by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, and secure. Keeping things moving right here. Giannis is at the podium. Let's take a listen. Just looking at the how wide the pivot was. Sorry, uh, I, I didn't I didn't hear the the question. Do you guys hear the question? No. Will you can say one more time. I think yeah, so. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me a little better, Giannis? Yeah, I, th I think it's on our side. The, I, no, she's quiet on our end, too. We could just yell a little louder, please. I'm going to yell. Can you hear me okay, Giannis? I can hear you now. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, Bud said after last game, it doesn't matter if you win or lose by 40, it's still a win or a loss. And Drew Holiday said today, if we need to muck it up, we're going to muck it up. It doesn't always need to be pretty. I'm wondering how that shaped your guys' mindset and your effort tonight. Win is a win. Win is a win. And uh, at the end of the day, as I said, last game, lose by 40, lose by one, it's still the same thing. You know, it's still the last. And uh, today we were, we didn't score a lot. Uh, it didn't look as pretty, but at the end of the day, uh, we got a win. And, um, you know, that's why we came and showed up tonight. Uh, we knew it was a very, very tough game, and uh, we knew that we needed this game as much as possible. And uh, hopefully we can get the next one, but uh, at the end of the day, a win is a win. It doesn't matter if you win by 30, it doesn't matter if you win by one. If you can go back home and um, celebrate uh, W, it feels good. Irie said that um, it's, a, it's an old, good old-fashioned game, this type of playoff game that's so low-scoring. Do you agree with that kind of assessment? Do you enjoy that sort of tactical play? Um, yeah, I, personally, I, I enjoy fast, fast pace, you know, um, a lot of trying to, you know, find my teammates for a lot of threes, uh, high scoring game, obviously, but at the end of the day, you know, it was a very low scoring game, uh, possession by possession, uh, you had to get stops to win this game, uh, you had to knock down big shots to win this game. And um, at the end of the day, when you play a basketball game and you win the game, you you enjoy it. Uh, but I think we can we can play better. We can play better. Uh, we can play faster. Uh, we can play more together. We can move the ball better. 
um, so we can get back to our scoring 110, 120 points uh, like we usually do. But at the end of the day, if we can win a game by scoring, how many scored? 84, 86. I'll take it any night. Thank you. Thank you. Eric name. Hey, Alex. Um, last game you took 15 shots. Tonight you took 31. Um, how much of a priority was it for you to be aggressive just kind of right out of the gate tonight? Yeah, I was, I was thinking about being aggressive. I was just thinking about being the moment. Uh, I knew that, you know, my instinct is going to take over. Uh, I'm going to try to make the right play. Um, uh, the, I, didn't, I didn't start the game thinking I got to be aggressive. I got to shoot 30 shots. I got to, no, no, no. I was just trying to be in the moment, trying to make the right play. And as I said, I knew my instinct was going to take over. So then I guess what led to you taking that many shots? Like, what were you seeing that that, that was kind of like the right play and, and what your team needed? Um, yeah, you know, the person that was guarding me was far back, but at the end of the day, they're always far back, so I'm not going to shoot six shots. Just picking and choosing, you know, when I feel good, when I want to be aggressive, um, get into my spots as much as possible, um, try to get my teammates involved as much as possible, but uh, just being the moment and, you know, just getting the best decision from each moment. Uh, and that's that was my mindset. You took eight threes tonight. That's the most you've taken in a playoff game. What do you feel like you're getting out of the three point line and like the shots that you take? I took eight threes tonight. Uh, the, the back, you know, you, you gotta shoot it. You know, not necessarily you gotta shoot it, you gotta make the best decision. Uh, at the time, if I feel like uh, I can knock it down, I'm, I'm gonna shoot it. If I feel like I gotta get my teammates involved, I'm gonna get my teammates involved. But at the end of the day, um, as I said, just make the best decision for that particular moment. And uh, as I said, my instinct told me that taking a three in that moment was the best decision. So that's why I took probably eight threes. I need not to get threes. Lori Nickel. Do you feel like you would be conceding something, though, if you backed off the three-pointer? Like, do you feel like you'd be admitting defeat or something like that? No, no. Uh, it's, 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 it's all about instinct. Basketball is all about instincts. And uh, at the end of the day, if my instinct is telling me that's the right decision to take, you know, I live with that. Um, it's the same, like everybody, if you wake up in the morning and you think that you got to drink a, a cup of coffee, and that's what you want to do, that's what your instinct is telling you, that's what your soul is telling you, whatever the case might be, that's what you do. You know, uh, it doesn't really matter um, what happens next, you know, because you live, you live with the decision you make. And at the end of the day, as I said, I was just trying to make the right decision at the right moment. And uh, today was shooting eight threes, maybe next game shooting zero threes. Who knows? I'm just going to try to you know, keep making the right decision. One more quick question on that. You hit four three-pointers in both games, I think, against Brooklyn in May. The only way to get back to that, right, is to keep shooting? Is that how you shoot your way back to one, two, three makes a game? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. Obviously, if you shoot, you have uh, more chance of making shots. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, the only way you can get back that is by being in the moment. Like, if you th keep thinking about it, you're never going to get back there. So, just trying to be in the moment, try to make the right decision. And uh, if I can knock down one or two or three or four or five, it's going to be a great night. I just tried, I tried to start with one, you know, so get myself going. Thank you. Rachel Nichols. Hi, Anis. Um, Hi, I know for how long and how hard you have been working on free throws. What is your process right now to try to improve your three throws? How much of your practice time are you spending on it? What time of day? That kind of thing. Uh, I I don't shoot free throws. I just don't. I don't practice at all. I I, just, I do not show up in the gym. I don't rep it out. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just being lazy. No. Uh, yeah, that's, that's so like you. <laughs> No, I, I, you know, I shoot them, you know, and then that you got to trust my work. That's it. I think that's the key in uh, unlocking your true potential as a human being. You got to trust your work, you know, and uh, a lot of people work very extre extremely hard. But you got to be able to translate it, you know, to the game, from practice to the game. And uh, 
it's, it's, it's a process, but at the end of the day, you got to be able to trust yourself, trust your work, and uh, be able to unlock your potential. What, so how much time are you spending on it right now? Uh, a lot. I don't, uh, I never keep count in uh, how long I, you know, work out. But I spend a lot of time whenever I practice, before, before practice, after practice, before games. I spend a lot of time. Thank you. Right, thanks, Giannis. That was Giannis. Now time for the winning performance fueled by Gatorade. It was Chris Middleton. You saw what he did in games one and two. Let's just say he did substantially better in game three. Just one point off his playoff career high. He had 35, a career high rebounds with 15 in the game. He scored eight of the Bucks' last 10 points, and he is now at the podium. You know, I, I guess what uh, what opened up for you, or, or what changed there, when obviously the shots were going in. I don't know if it's as simple as that, or, or what was kind of the where you see and what was the mindset. Mm -hmm. no, I, I like for the most part the shots that I got in game one and two um, in Brooklyn. Uh, it's just a matter of you know just staying with it, um, taking some of the same mm -hmm. shots, um, just having the confidence to knock it out. Is it overstating it, though, to say that when you and Giannis specifically get going like that in the way that you did at home, um, added something? I know they came back and it was a game and it was tough, but just um, did that kind of set a tone, do you think, at least on an emotional level uh, for you guys earlier? Yeah, I think uh, we did a great job setting the tone at the same time. I think uh, we got to figure out a way to get other guys involved. Um, you know, I think that could have made our night a little bit easier. Um, but at the same time, we still have to be aggressive. Uh, still have to be able to, you know, take shots, uh, find our spots, but you know, also find a way to get other guys involved. Also, and just I guess to that end, um, you know, it's about winning the game at hand, right? And so, I guess, what did you see from your teammates, whether it be the the, the, the defense or the, you know, Brooke, I think with six blocks, um, kind of pesky, maybe you know, loose balls. Well, what did you see from the rest of the group? I guess to, to help you guys get it done. You no know, defense, I think. You know, like you said, Brooke did a great job with taking a, um, taking away a lot of layups, altering a lot of shots, making the change the path a little bit more on um, their shots and stuff like that. Um, Drew, um, Tuck, they did an extremely great, great job of just trying to make um, everything tough for Katie and Kyrie, um, make them work for the catches, make them work to get to their spots. You know, those guys are great players. They're going to hit a lot of tough shots like they did tonight. But I think for the most part, you know, they did an extremely well job of, you know, just trying to make it tough on those guys. And, you know, everybody else, Bobby, um, Bryn, um, Pat, you know, everybody just battle. Um, try to try to do everything for us. Eric Dave. Hey Chris, I think about six minutes left. Uh, you have a turnover in the pick and roll in the middle with with Giannis. Bruce Brown goes the other end, tied 76, 76. You guys don't score for the next three minutes, either team. And then three ten, you come back for the timeout, and it's just you and Giannis in the pick and roll again. What were you seeing there, and kind of what allowed you to have that confidence that you know even after a play like that, you're still able to have that confidence in the second shot? I mean, like I said, um, you know, we ran a lot of pick and roll um, the first two games in Brooklyn. Uh, I was able to get to my spots, just, you know, wasn't making the shot. Uh, making the right pass, making the right reads uh, tonight. And I just tried to, you know, make the right reads and make those shots. Um, I could see what they're trying to give me. Um, just to try to take advantage of it. I feel like I could score in a lot of different ways. Um, and, you know, those shots, those are the type of shots they want me to take. And, you know, I'm confident. And I think I'm, I'm good enough. I worked on those shots a lot to, to knock them down. And it went down for me tonight. Late in the game, you guys have to defend two sideline out of bounds plays. What did you like about uh, Drew mentioned the communication in those moments? Just what did you like about the way you executed defense late in those kind of two? Like you said communication, um, be fine. Um, it challenged every shot. I think even, you know, Tuck did a great job of forcing KD to take a one leg at three and it still hit the back rim. Those, that's the type of talent those guys have. Um, they're going to make shots one leg um, off, with the off uh, hand. Just got to try to make it tough and, and contest every shot and live with the results. We've been talking about Bruce Brown in that short roll. Uh, he got loose for, I think, eight points in the second quarter. What did you think of Brooks' ability to handle that and then still start affecting them again in the second half and not kind of like lose his confidence or anything like that? Brooke definitely still has one of the hardest jobs. Um, he's all over the place. He's a seven-footer that, you know, is up on the pick and rolls or out on the perimeter sometimes to try to help other guys. But, you know, he really doesn't have much help in the paint. Um, but he does a great job of uh, sprinting back, trying to make a guy shoot over him, try to also the shot to block it. Rachel Nichols. 
Hey, Chris. Um, obviously, Kevin's just height and reach is part of why he's such a great shot maker. But what else makes him hard to defend when he's shooting well? He's able to get to his spots. He's a, a seven-footer that can handle. Um, you know, you try to get up under him. You try to be physical with him. Uh, he has a great handle to him. Um, you know, he can score from anywhere, and that's the most dangerous part, uh, part about him. Uh, he scored from three feet behind the line, um, mid-range and three. Um, so, yeah, at times you don't know when he's going to pull up or, or when he's going to drive. You just got to try to stay with him and contest. Do you remember the first time you were on the court against him and kind of experiencing that? Man, that was – I sound old now. I'm not that old. Uh -huh. but, <laughs> uh, man, it would have to be with OKC. Um, you know, I, when I was in Detroit, my rookie year didn't play that much. Um, just seeing his length, um, the way he was just able to shoot over guys with ease, like they weren't even there. Um, it's still like that to this day, um, but even better, even more efficient. Thank you. Chris Middleton, who finishes with 35 and 15. Here is a look at the series schedule. Sunday is the next game. That's 3 p.m. on ABC Tuesday TNT. This might turn into a series or could Brooklyn take it? You know what? That's a question. That's a great one. I'm going to pose it to my two esteemed basketball colleagues here. Zeke, starting with you, what do we expect to see in game four? Is this an anomaly seeing Brooklyn shoot so poorly and seeing the Milwaukee Bucks shoot so poorly? Or is this series going to shift towards the, 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 the what am I trying to say, the Milwaukee Bucks in game four? Well, the, the, the last, uh, you know, couple of games, uh, Milwaukee gets um, 86 and 86. And, you know, they're, they're having a tough time scoring the basketball. But what they have to do is hold Brooklyn under 100. Now, if Brooklyn can get 100, you know, then, then, you know, Milwaukee's in trouble. It seems like Brooklyn has figured out how to stop Milwaukee from scoring. And what Milwaukee has to continue to do, just as they did tonight, is keep Brooklyn from scoring, too. So it's got to be another dirty, ugly game. Uh, Milwaukee has to fight for their life and uh, to tie the series up. But if they get into an up and down and who scores the most points, then uh, Brooklyn most likely will end up winning the game if it's a you know, high-scoring uh, slugfest. This game tonight, the first time the Brooklyn Nets have been held underneath 100 in the playoffs. B. Wood, what are you seeing happening in Game 4? In Game 4, it's going to all be about the adjustments and which coaching staff comes in and has this, their team more prepared and has the better adjustments. And for Milwaukee, we look at the fact that they have not scored the ball well in this series. So for Coach Bud, you have to change something. That's three games in a row where you have not scored the ball at the same rate that you did in the regular season. So you have to make some minor tweaks. Maybe that's using Giannis in a different way. Um, maybe that's turning down some of those uh, early threes from Giannis, using him as a screener to get guys open and then having him roll to the basket where he now becomes super dangerous. I think those are the type of things that they have to look at. But if you're Milwaukee, you have to say, we're going to tweak our game plan a little bit. And, and if you're Brooklyn, you have to say, okay, what did Milwaukee do defensively? They forced Bruce Brown into taking a lot of shots. They said, we're going to live with him taking 17 shots. And if you trust Bruce Brown, you have to figure out a way to get the ball in your best player's hands. Yeah, Bruce Brown did have a huge game. However, Kevin Durant shooting 11 for 28 usually doesn't shoot that poorly, a lot more efficient, especially when it comes time to the playoffs. Can't wait to see game four. That is Sunday. Well, that is a wrap for what we have for you. We appreciate you for watching. For the Hall of Famer, Isaiah Thomas, who has two of them things. Oh, yeah, be what?